What's up, da? Damn, man. Hey, always on time. Always on time. Even if it's a minute early, try to be on time, you know? Always on time. I have nice to get look. my hair ready, man. Get yeah, me too, man. To me too, man. Now that yeah. it's, I got this video live, I got to yeah. do my hair, you know? You, you look good, man. Thank you. You too, man. Molto bene. What a hair, Lidi is saying. What a hair. Quanta gente c'è che... Un sacco... Chris, un sacco di gente. My guy Kevin Pillar just logged on. KP, what's up, man? Sorry about it. Hey, Kevin, you're next. How about that? Oh, man. I'll tell Kev you got, we got to get him on an interview. We'll, we got to we'll get... An Italian-American interview with KP. We got to get Kevin. We got to get Bautista. We got to get Encarnacion. All those guys. Ooh. Oh, okay. I'll let me... I'll, hey, listen, I'll try. I'll try to do whatever so, I can. So they can talk crap about you. For Dominate. Since there's a gente that's impatient that it's Kevin. Oh. <laughs> we, we're waiting for David, David uh, Price now. Oh, nice. okay. Whew. That's CC. a lot of pressure, guys. See, see, we got 50 people already, so. Okay, uh, sure. We're going to speak Italian and English, whatever. We can mix. Yeah. Eh? That's Mi great. Chiamo. Perfect. Spanish, too, maybe. What Somebody to wants. Night? Un po' di tutto. Tanto così insegniamo, insegniamo la gente la lingua che non capiscono. Cioè, facciamo anche scuola di inglese e italiano. Perfetto, perfetto. Più di così, dovremmo iniziare a chiedere i soldi, che cosa dici? Eh, no, davvero. <ride> allora, Chris, eh, ieri ho messo un po' di immagini tue del 2015, è esploso l'Instagram, <ride> uh, I put some videos of Chris yesterday on, on my stories and... Uh, i got excited to actually put those videos on, you know, in there. <laughs> uh, I got goosebumps to watch the, the highlights again because we watched the highlights a bunch of times together, but pretty sick, man. Um, anche in italiano dice Valerio perché non capisce l'inglese. Boss, <laughs> dicevo che ho imparato ormai. No, ieri ho messo i video di Chris, è veramente spettacolare. Il 2015 poi è stato l'anno, l'anno clou. Comunque adesso... Andiamo indietro. Riniziamo come, come con Liddy da quando eravamo bambini. Uh, we go back all the way when we were kids. Mm-hmm. Oh, young, very young Chris Colabello. Born in the States, right? You were, you were a big part of my development, man. Yeah. Probabilmente sei stato il mio primo strikeout. Eh, con te lanciatore. No, born in the States, sei nato in America. Però quanti anni sei venuto in Italia? When, when did you actually come to, to Italy for the first time? Ho fatto 4, 4, dei, 5, 4 dei 5 anni dell'elementare. Quindi la prima, la seconda, la quarta, la quinta. First, second, fourth and fifth grade were in Italy. Third grade was here in the States. Um, and we were, we were back and forth kind of around it from, you know, the years before and the years after playing baseball and doing the summers there. We always did Christmas in America. Natale, Natale sempre in America. Okay. E, e l'estate è sempre in Italia, quindi bella vita che facevo. Ah, quindi facevi il tuo campionato con Rimini Baseball, forti, eravate fortissimi, eh? <ride> tre vandi, eravate due italo-americani. Sì, abbiamo vinto lo scudetto un anno, è stata eh, bella, infatti... bella esperienza, da piccoli dai, poi anche rappresentare la nazionale, fare le cose con la squadra regionale, era, era molto bella, cioè le giovanili in Italia secondo me erano bellissime per quella, sì, sì, per sì. quella ragione. So, you know, back in the days, Little League was, was pretty fun in Italy. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if it's still the same, but back when we were playing, and even the level was good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I always used to tell people that baseball, like youth baseball in Italy, was better than youth baseball in America. And not necessarily because you had better players across the board, but in, in America, you play in-town baseball, right? So you take a yeah. bunch of kids all from the same town and they end up playing in one league. So until you got to, you know, all-stars or your, your select teams, w- w- instead, in Italy, it was, the, it was the city. We had one team in the city, and then we'd go around all Italy and play like that. So yeah. it felt like we were playing all-stars earlier than, than we would here in America. So it always felt like I was playing at a higher level. And then when I did the national team and we went and did the European Cup, it was the same thing. Quindi, so, la nazionale, grande esperienza, da, l'ho fatta a 11-12 anni, sì. ho fatto Parigi e Praga, è veramente bella roba. Bei ricordi, bei ricordi. Quindi dopo invece sei poi tornato in America per, diciamo, eh, all'età dicevi di? 
di quanti anni più o meno? Quando, quando ho fatto 12 anni poi alla fine sono tornato qua a fare la scuola per, ah. per le medie so, sono tornato un paio d'estati però ero sempre cioè ero sempre sì sì dopo poi... là, dai diciamo so 12, 12 years old you actually went back to the states and you ended up just playing what high school? Yeah, well, at first we did, uh, I did my, my Babe Ruth, they called it Babe Ruth, which okay. was the first experiences on the big field, and then um, after that you move on to high school, and okay. then it becomes school ball, because until you get to high school, we didn't, we didn't have middle school teams. No, a, lot, a lot of places around the country will have, will have, like, middle school teams that they play with, but my school did not, so we had to play, continue with rec ball, you know. Ah, okay, okay. Quindi superiori in America, e poi college no, vero? Ho fatto... Sì, college ho fatto, ho giocato, sono andato a Assumption College dopo, okay. ho fatto quattro anni lì e ah. ho giocato con la scuola. Poi d'estate, nell'estive in America c'è leghe sì. per, per i giocatori del college, quindi il terzo anno sono riuscito a fare, sono riuscito a fare una delle leghe più forti, è andata molto bene. Quella è stata la volta che, diciamo, pensavo che, che mi avrebbero scelto nel draft, però... Ah. Uh, non, non, so è successo, eh, non è successo purtroppo non è successo so how old were you at that time so I went to school I was 18 when I went to college and then yeah. 20, I was 21 when I graduated I was 17 when I went to college and 21 when I graduated and then I got done with college and I didn't get drafted after you know doing what I thought I needed to do and unfortunately it didn't happen so now I'm 21 years old and I remember the day of the draft I was sitting in my room and I i was really just, I, 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 I didn't know what to do. I was so lost. I was so confused because baseball was everything I ever knew. You know, uh -huh. I'm, I said, if I didn't get drafted, now what? And, uh, you know, fortunately that day I got a call from my old coach in college who was friends with one of the, one of the coaches for the new independent team, the Worcester Tornadoes. They called me and they said, hey, uh, do you want to come try out? And I, I said, sure, but all, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what independent ball was. I just thought uh -huh. it was, I thought it was a men's league. I thought it was, you know, just something to pass the time. But yeah. I figured I'd go check it out, you know. So. E quindi but sei yeah. andato appunto a giocare independent. Sì, no, sì. Non per un anno, ma per molti anni. E poi sono diventati sette anni, che non mi sarei immaginato. Eh, sette anni, andato... Chris? Perché comunque non avevi perso la speranza o perché pensavi che quel, cioè il baseball comunque era la tua vita e volevi continuare? Un po' di sulle due, diciamo, Ale, perché penso che sono stato molto fortunato nel senso, prima di tutto, giocare vicino a casa, in independent, mm. eh, no, cioè no, non c'è nessuno che in teoria è permesso questo, di questo, no? Cioè, c'è sì. poca gente che sa perché deve essere che giochi alla posizione giusta, che c'è la squadra giusta, c'è il manager giusto, che okay. tutte queste cose devono rimanere tipo in, in linea, no? Sì, sì. Eh, 400 fuori campi, grazie Matti. Eh, <ride> eh, no, io, uh, so, I, it, I, I was lucky because I, not a lot of guys get to play close to home and, okay. and have a life in the off season during independent ball because you don't, you don't make a lot of money. Yeah. So, The, the hard part is what, you know, what, what to do in the off season. Is it sustainable? And, and you asked, you know, because I thought I was, I was good enough. And I made myself three promises or one promise that had three conditions. Okay. I told myself I would keep playing. If number one, I, it was financially, physically feasible, right? Like I didn't have a family that I needed to support. Uh, my parents supported me. Um, number two was that I felt like I was still getting, that I was still getting better every year, right? And the third one that I was still having fun. E, e tutte quelle tre cose, quindi divertimento, essendo okay. l'ultima la più importante secondo me, che stavo migliorando e che era una cosa che potevo fare fisicamente. Perché comunque, cioè, avevi un lavoro in inverno che ti permetteva di continuare a farlo. Bravo, e quindi, cioè, ho... Oh, oh, sono una delle cose che dico a molta gente eh, che sono sempre stato molto onesto con me stesso, no? Sì. La mia prospettiva era una molto onesta, quindi io mi guardavo sempre attorno per vedere le capacità dei giocatori, abilità, 
e facevi i paragoni nella mia mente. Ovviamente... Eri stato... fortissimo. <ride> Bravo. <ride> sono state molte volte che eh, ho riconosciuto che... Cioè, mi sembrava che quando era... i giocatori venivano dalla mezzo, o triplo A, a giocare indipendente, o quando facevamo degli allenamenti dell'off-season con quelli che avevo sempre quell'abilità che avevo con loro. Cioè, mi sembrava, no? Almeno eh, sono rimasto onesto con me stesso per quello. Sì, sì, sì. Quindi anche mentalmente cioè, ancora ci credevi, diciamo, in fondo, sì, in fondo. Sì, sì, e poi finalmente arriva il 2012. Uh, finally, 2012. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was... You get the sign, right? Yeah, it was crazy. I, you know, the year before, it was really... I, Italy had called me a lot at that mm. point. Italy had, had called every year to try to come. Hey, will you come to Rimini? Come to San Marino? Come here. And it was getting to the point. I'm 26, 27, 28. And that, that 27-year-old season, I remember uh, Chris Catanozzo yeah. and, uh, and Monica had called me a lot because they, they really thought, they're like, look, you know, we'll get you a good offer. Fred really wants you to come to Rimini. And I, I was close, I, but I said, you know what? I just got to give it one more year. If it, if one more year here in the States, and we'll see what happens. And that was the year that I started working with Bobby Tewksbury. Mm -hmm. You know, Bobby's my best friend, one of my best friends. Um, and uh, he was just stubborn enough to start talking to me about the swing and the mechanics. And I, I thought he was crazy, but, you know, at that point, I, I said, you know what? I'm, uh, I might as well try, right? And I, I saw what he was talking about. But I, I didn't know. I just didn't know yet. And then, uh, you know, I started going through this winter. And then 11 turned into a crazy season. I, I felt like, you know, I was finally the player that I, I, I knew I could turn into. And then 12, I signed. And even the way I signed was crazy. It was, you know, all winter, Arizona had been calling. And they said, you know, we want to bring you in. We want to bring you in. And, and then at the last minute, they're like, can you come to a camp? I was like, no, I've been to a million of these. Like, why do you need me to fly to Arizona and work out for one day? Like, I'm not fast. I'm, I'm not going to take a ground ball better than anybody <laughs> else. Like, you're not going to see me do... Non mi vedrai fare niente in un giorno. Il solito tryout che ti danno un giorno. ma per un atleta spettacolare magari puoi dire, dai, quello lì viene un giorno, corri il 60 yard dash e... Lo corre eh, in un cose. razzo, certo. Io quelle cose non, non sono in grado di farle, quindi cioè, ho cominciato a parlare, cioè loro mi stavano facendo, diciamo, incazzare un po' e alla fine mi ha chiamato il mio agent di adesso e mi fa, sai che ho, chiam... ho parlato con Minnesota? Ho detto, ah, va bene, fammi sapere, Passo... sono passati tipo dieci giorni, non ho sentito niente e, e poi mi ha chiamato uno scout di Boston e mi fa... Mi fa... Oi, ascolta, Chris, mi ha lasciato tutto questo messaggio, no? Oh, sto cercando prima base, terza base, con, con power, abbiamo bisogno che, de, che, che un giocatore va a giocare e poi va in Italia. E io, ma va, <ride> il scout di Boston mi chiama me perché deve andare in Italia. Allora, fammelo richiamare perché almeno vediamo se conosce il tipo dei Twins che dovrebbe venire a, a, a vedere il, il, il workout. Uh -huh. e, um, L'ho chiamato, ho richiamato, gli ho detto, eh, non ti preoccupare, se devo, cioè, se per andare in Italia io posso far così, non Mi per fare la solo. Certo. Londra, no? però e dopo comunque lui conosceva lo scout di Minnesota, mi ha detto, oh, no, no, te lo chiamo adesso, ci siamo collegati così, lui è venuto, è venuto a fare il workout il giorno dopo, e poi il Twins l'ha firmato. Ti hai firmato e poi, ok, so you sign, and then, yeah. I mean, it was pretty quick, I, yeah. 2012 you sign, right. and you went off right away. Well, much. sort of. I, I was, uh, you know, <laughs> spring training was hard because the only experience I had yeah. to that point was I'd gotten cut, right? I, in 2006, I was with Detroit and they released me. Okay. I never got out of spring training. So the first couple weeks, the first week, no good, like one for 15. But I was playing okay. I, I, it just wasn't getting hits. Okay. So the next week, the manager says to me, he's like, hey, we really want to get you in there all week. And I said, great. Then I start going off, right? Twins minor league player of the week, the third week of the season, or second or third week of the season. And now I'm starting to taste myself a little bit, feeling good. But then, you know, cool off a little. And now the month of May was the worst month I ever had in my life. And now I'm going crazy. Like, I'm 
my mind is everywhere. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. They're telling me to do this. And it was hard. It was hard to play because my mind wasn't clear. I wasn't dominating here. <laughs> I, I was getting dominated. Um, and then finally, like, I, I, I had a, a long talk with Bobby right at the last day of May. I was hitting 222 when I went to see Bobby. And then uh, I remember we just I just started having fun. I just started playing. Cominciato a divertirmi e e basta, finito lì. Dopo tutto tutto il percorso è diventato molto più molto più facile, diciamo, non cioè non facile, però molto più divertente. Sembrava tutte le mie capacità sono son tornate, no? E, e, tutto dal divertimento, dal punto di vista che, che stavo portando al campo tutti i giorni. Dopo quindi 2013 quando poi hai esordito, giusto, con il Minnesota? 2013 dopo abbiamo fatto il Classic insieme. Sì, giusto. E, e poi? E, no, è stata... Cioè, anche quell'esperienza lì, Ale, ti dico... Sì, è stata veramente fuori di testa. Spettacolare, no? Perché prima di tutto dal punto di vista che... A quel punto sapevo, ho fatto Winter Bowl quell'anno in Messico. Giusto. E, e sapevo già, cioè, ho giocato molto bene là, però la prima volta che vai a Big League Camp e ti metti in, in quelle situazioni tipo classic, Big League Spring Training, partite in televisione, e cominci a sentire un po' l'emozione. E, e quei momenti a me mi hanno sempre aiutato, no? Mi hanno certo. portato a un livello più alto. Infatti, cioè, direi al classic è stata... È stata come like my, my coming out party, you know. My, mm-hmm. Everybody started to kind of get to know who Chris Colavel was. And, right. Um, and then, you know, I felt so confident when I went to AAA. You, you know, you want to talk about the difference between 2012 and 2013. When I, when I started the season that year, I had so much clarity, like just so much clarity. I was confident who I was. I knew the organization knew who I was. I didn't feel like I needed to prove anything to anyone. And it made it much easier to go out on the field every day, you know, it made it easier to go out and be comp- like, just believe in yourself. And that the, the first month and a half in triple a was, I, you know, the day I got called up, I was hitting through, I, I want to say it was 45 games. I was hitting like 370 with, with 12 homers and, you know, a bunch of RBIs. So it, it, it's, yeah, they- it's, talks about the you know the difference of like when you're when you have that that mental freedom how you can play and then obviously I got the call and <sighs> e quindi che resort in mezzo no cioè le sensazioni cioè finalmente dopo tutti quegli anni no so like the debut like after all those years you finally made it finalmente sei in mezzo e è più stata più una liberazione anche lì o anche lì è stata più una cosa okay now let's go cioè oh. nel senso da, de- da adesso sì che si inizia hai detto molto bene, Ale. penso che per me a quel punto è, stato, è stata una liberazione, ti dico la verità, perché non, cioè non, l'ho vista come, non l'ho vista come una sfida che la dovevo vedere dall'inizio e con, con l'aspettativa che sarei arrivato e l'avrei fatto. Pensavo a un certo punto che sarei arrivato, no? ovviamente, specialmente dopo che è cominciata quella stagione, e non penso che ho mai perso, in tutti gli anni non ho mai perso l'idea che ci sarei arrivato a un certo punto, sì. però ti dico la verità, quando sono arrivato se, cioè, è il massimo livello, no? quindi ci arrivi e dici magari ah ok, adesso io devo, io devo adattarmi al gioco, sì. eh, devo adattarmi alla gente che c'è lì, nelle, nei modi di fare che hanno loro, invece che essere... Avere, cioè, avere that confidence, that confidence certo. that you belong, that confidence that the way you are is the right way. Mm-hmm. E quindi, cioè, tutto il primo anno, ti direi la verità, è stata fatica per me adattarmi a quello, no? Avere, cioè, veramente avere cioè, certo, certo. una capacità mentale che ti, ti dice, ok, io, io posso essere me stesso qua. Esatto. E, e tutto sarà ok e, e avrò la, la capacità di andare a giocare come gioco io normalmente. Sì, sì, esatto. Sicuro che quando arrivi lì eh, uno dice a questa gente cioè, devo fare qualcosa magari di diverso no? per essere qua con loro, quando invece è stato chiamato perché stai facendo quello che stai facendo. Mm-hmm. E quindi dopo a fine, so end of 2013, you get an offer from South Korea, right? Cioè ti arriva yeah. una, una, cospi- una bellissima offerta da, da, da Sud Corea, yeah. quindi yeah. avevi appena bagnato i tuoi piedi in quella che era la Major e lì subito è arrivata l'offerta, giusto? Che 
che ti ha messo un po' ad un bivio? È stata probabilmente, Ale, cioè, non probabilmente, è stata la, la decisione più difficile della mia vita, sì. assolutamente. E, guarda, una cosa che poi non, non, ero mai, non mi sarei mai aspettato, perché non, cioè, non pensavo che funzionava così l'Asia, no? Pensavo arrivi alla fine della carriera o magari fai vedere che non, non sei in grado di farlo in major o che sei lì lì però non ti arriva l'opportunità ti arriva lì le offerte la differenza per me è che, è che a quel punto io avevo 29 anni no? Cioè, cioè, 30 anni anche ne facevo 29 per anni sì. e, no, sta, cioè, ti arriva questa offerta e all'inizio parlavano di cifre molto più piccole, non molto più piccole, nel senso... Sì, so, comunque non, sempre non so molto dire, alte. Però cominciano, diciamo, a 300.000, no? Che è un certo. numero che è ancora un numero molto... Che, che significa, ovviamente, però... Certo. So, che puoi guadagnare lo stesso se giochi in mezzo. E, e poi, giorno per giorno, sembrava che mi arrivava un'altra telefonata al mio agent che mi diceva una cifra più alta e sono arrivati quasi a un milione, eh, so real quick in English, like you actually get this offer from South Korea and at first you're like, okay, you know, it's like around 300,000 and you're like, that's not bad, but you know, my dream is to play in the bigs. And then it, it went up and up and up, like almost up to a million, like in a few days. And that's when you're like, okay, yeah. so. I, I, was, I was actually trying to make it hard for them. I was trying to make it harder for them than I was for myself. I kept saying... <laughs> I was like, let me just throw a ridiculous number out there and see what they say. And they'd offer $600,000. I'm like, nah, that's not, I don't want that. <laughs> I was trying to put, you know, I was trying to get them to back off. Same. Because that way it would, it would make the decision for me, right? You know, I could, yeah. go, I could just go back to America, which is what I wanted to do. I knew I yeah. wanted to be in the big leagues. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, looking back on it, there's... <laughs> You could, I, I second guess it sometimes, but obviously the experience that I had in the big leagues, I wouldn't trade for anything. Uh, especially that the next yeah, year you had. What happened, you know, in 2015 was magic, See. you know. And I, but again, it was, it was just one of those things where I knew it wasn't time for me to go there, and that if if things, you know, stayed normal, I I would have an opportunity to go back to. To Korea later, hopefully, sure. if I needed it. Um, so I just I said thank you, but no thank you, and and went back to Minnesota. Even though they told me they they were telling me the twins were telling me to sign in Korea. The twins were saying, "Hey, you should go. You should go take the money." And I was like, "No, I'm good." So because they they wanted to free up a roster spot so they could, okay. they could sign a player, and and they knew if they if they put me on waivers, somebody would claim me, and then if I went and played great, they were gonna look like idiots. So. They kept me on the roster, and they they told me, they told me before spring training when I was talking to them about Korea, they told me I had less than a one percent chance of making the team out of camp. And I said, okay, that's good enough. That's, that's better. That's better than the chances I had when I was in independent ball. So of course, yeah. Eh, quindi eh, poi dopo come è successo che sei andato qui a Toronto? Eh, dopo la stagione del 2014. Eh, dopo tutto il 2014. Maldito. Yeah, I, I hurt my finger. Okay. In 2014, I played the whole year with nerve damage in my thumb. So I, I started out so well. I made the team and everything was great. And, you know, put, made uh, American League Player of the Week, break Kirby Puckett's RBIs in April. But then at the end of April, I literally couldn't squeeze it bad anymore. And I kept trying to play. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have a great year. I had an okay year. And when I went down to AAA, I played okay. Um. But I killed Toronto early in the year. We had a big, huge series. I was like 7 for 12 against Toronto with like six doubles. And I remember thinking to myself, the Twins need to make a move. It's probably going to be me right around December. And I got the call from Terry Ryan, the GM. And he said, listen, uh, we had to put you on waivers. We didn't want to lose you, but Toronto claimed you. So, you know, I wish you nothing but the best. I said, oh, It felt like two weights fell off my shoulders because I, okay. I needed to get out of there. I just needed to move on. And Toronto called me right after, and they said, we're bringing you into camp. Now, they, all, they, they designated me for assignment right before spring training because mm -hmm. they, Toronto was notorious for, like, trying to claim guys on waivers just so they could stockpile players. And, but I was just happy. I knew a lot of the guys. I knew KP. I knew, I knew Gogo. Like, we played together in the minors against each other. 
Um, Donaldson had just gotten traded there, who I've been, you know, I've been boys with from before. So it, it felt like it was going to be a cool opportunity, and they needed, you know, they needed a first baseman type type bat like me, and they were going to be a good team. So it it was very easy to go in there and just be myself. And that was part of what made us great. And I tell people that all the time, we were just very, we were, we were good at being our own personalities. It's not the most facile to be myself when we came to Toronto. Molto, molto facile. E per quello che eravamo una squadra forte. Sì, sì, poi è stato un anno, naturalmente, che tutti sappiamo, abbiamo visto anche nelle immagini che ho messo, dove te sei stato uno dei protagonisti in mezzo a gente che comunque tutti noi sappiamo che è famosissima, comunque lo stesso Kevin Pilar che, che è lì, quindi so that year you actually became one of the, the main guys of a team that actually, you know, did what it did. Uh, you know, with all those kind of players that we all know, Uh, we all watch on TV and I mean you were one of them I, I remember like I was actually in Japan and I would tell my wife every every day like he hit another bomb like he's, he's still hitting like I would be like I would wake up and watch the highlights uh, and I would see like you like just kept hitting and I, w- I would be just like watching the videos and I was like wow like he's really doing it you know yeah. um, allora io ho delle domande dei I have a couple questions uh, from a few followers. Uh, one of Michele Flores, and ti chiede meglio Bautista or Encarnacion? Uh, one of the guys asked if is better, Bautista is better or Encarnacion? I'm not sure like, if, Co- like, cioè, in general, in general. In general, okay. <laughs> uh, so, general, both great. I'm still, I'm still close with Jose. I talked to Edwin less than I talked to Jose. Two completely different personalities. Edwin, It's like this. So, man. <laughs> and Bautista is more like me. Talk, 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 talk. And, and very, very smart, very eloquent, very educated. Um, so completely different personalities. I think it's always been easier for me to communicate with Jose because we just have more similar styles, right? Okay. But Edwin's great in his own right. So it, it, you can't, I can't make a comparison of one or the other in terms of personality. In terms of players, I mean. Yeah, I know. Like 1A and 1B, I, like, I, there's no, there's no, I mean, they, they were both so good. For, they've been good for so long. Um, I would say Edwin was probably a little bit more just the same all the time. Like if you look up at the end of the year, Edwin's going to have 30 and 100. You know what I mean? You just, uh-huh. you just chalk it up, 30 and 100. Uh, where Jose had probably like a little bit more room to, to be, you know, 40, 50, whatever, and uh, had some really, really great years and obviously some all-star years. And, uh, but both great. Tutte due. Sì, 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 dai. Guarda, mi sono piaciuto un casino. They were great teammates and... Eh, hanno, hanno aiutato han, ma mi hanno aiutato molto a me a fare l'esperienza che ho fatto parlare di battuta tutte quelle cose quindi non, non posso dare, dire una no, no, sicuramente bellissimi ricordi immagino è una domanda simpatica un'altra domanda che sempre ha fatto Michele Floris another question from the same guy is, uh, is this one uh, how was it when actually Battista hit that bomb like come è stato quando Battista ha fatto il fuori campo Finito con l'ansia della massa, che dai, che so, tutti ci it's, funny, it's funny you ask that question, right? This week in Toronto, they, in all Canada, they, they re-showed that whole series, right? Every day they've been re-showing game one through five. So I've been getting a lot of questions. I did interviews with uh, Canadian sports networks, and Jose was on yesterday uh, or two nights ago with Sportsnet while they showed the game during the home run. And I talked to Jose right after. We've been texting back and forth the last, like, day or so. It's, it's crazy, man. Like, it, it was the greatest moment. It was the greatest moment of my career. There's no – there's no – I get the chills thinking about it, right? Winning the – like, winning the games in the WBC the way we did was, was like, yeah. second. And the personal things that I did in those tournaments and the personal things. But Jose's homer, it's, it's indescribable. Like, you – The, the events leading up to that moment that, uh, that created that scenario for uh-huh. that guy, for that team in that situation are unbelievable, right? 
pensa a tutte quelle cose che sono successe, che sono successe lì in prima, no? Sì. Pensa al fatto che era José, proprio la persona che rappresenta Toronto. Pensa al fatto che era gara 5. Pensa al fatto che c'erano tifosi che urlavano roba buttata in campo. Ogni volta che lo vedo mi vengono i brividi. I, get, I literally get chills every time I watch it. And I've watched it a lot. And I think... Ale, every guy on our team would tell you the same thing. I've heard a lot of our other guys' interviews. I talked to Mark Lowe the other day, one of our relief pitchers. I heard Gogo talk. Like, we all say the same. Like, we blacked out and we, we got chills. Like, we get chills every time we see it. The stadium was shaking, you were telling um, me. Uh, tremava, I, tremava. I felt the ground shake. And I promise you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. Everybody that says, one of the reporters the other night said, There's no, there's no chance anybody was watching Batista. And I said, I promise you, I watched the bat flip. So if you go <laughs> watch, if you watch the replay of the home run, he hits it. And then they show the dugout shot. And everybody's looking out to the field. And I'm standing there like this, staring at him. Because I saw him go like that. Because I knew, I, I watched the ball for a second. And then I turned back to him. And I was like, I didn't, know, I didn't even know what to do. It was unbelievable. It was crazy. <laughs> Dude, that's so awesome that you actually got to leave that moment. Um, I, I get more questions now. They're, they're pretty oh, funny. <laughs> Mattia is asking you if you like margherita con bufala or cheeseburger. <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, allora, questo è in italiano. Allora, ti, dire, ti dico la verità, sempre margherita. Scegliamo. Margherita con la bufala. No, non c'è dubbio. Non, non... Tra, le domande, tra le domande dei follower ce n'era una di un certo Alex Riddit che, che ti chiedeva se sai fare la pizza. Se so fare la pizza, cioè se so fare la pizza come la sai fare, sai fare. Non, non lo so, Libby, eh, scusa. <ride> uh, American pizza and Italian pizza are two different things, man. You know that, Ale. You live, <ride> Libby lives here. You, you should know that. Poi, Chris, allora, ritornando al baseball, naturalmente momenti stupendi, eh, momenti nella quale proprio, probabilmente anche mentalmente ti sentivi on top of the world, no? Cioè, anche mentalmente mi viene a pensare durante quelle partite quando fai quei fuori campi anche importanti situazioni che sono comunque clutch cioè lì veramente ci deve essere proprio uno spirito che si impossessa di te no? cioè, un senso di, di onnipotenza sì sì ti, ti dico la verità Ale. cioè secondo me io sono sempre stata una persona che una volta che faccio un'esperienza poi dopo la so gestire no? una volta che l'ho avuta posso sì. gestirla finché ho avuto quel momento da poter capire imparare è molto fatica no? I would say, I'll say in English too, sure. I'm, I'm a person who, once I experience something, I, I, I can make the adjustments. Until I've experienced it, I usually have a hard time with it. I can't understand it until I go through it. So I would say from a baseball perspective, that first year when I got up to the big leagues, and granted it was a different environment, it was just hard. It was hard because you have to, you have to get used to different things. You have to get used to bigger stadiums. You have to get used to better pitchers. You have, and better pitchers is you know, neither here nor there, because they're the triple-A big leagues, probably the same, right? Like, it's not, mm -hmm. it, but the name on the back of the jersey, uh, the way you go to the field, the way you're looked at by veterans, the amount of money that's around, so what guys are. So you start, you know, the media, so everywhere. So you start having to, like, deal with all this stuff that you're not used yes. to dealing with. And it can be overwhelming, and I, and I bet, I'm sure I didn't get to see the whole interview with Alex Lidby. I'm sure he would tell you a lot of the same things that when you first get up, it's like, especially if you're young and you've, if you've never dealt with stuff, it's, it's hard. It's just a lot. So you're, and you're trying to do everything and, and you don't focus just on your job. And then once, you know, 2014, I established myself in that first month and I said, I can do this. Like I knew I could do it at that point. I had made the adjustments and then obviously I got hurt. So 2015 was just the perfect storm because I went up there I'm in a, with a great team in a great environment with people I know and people that I trust. And I said, I just got to play. So, and I knew I could, you know, and mm -hmm. then things started out well. And once you start out well, it's like, hey, just keep going, man. Just keep going. Try to do something to help your team win. And it's all, it was all, it was really all just about mindset. So I believed in the fact that I was going to do those things and I knew that I could. So it's like, You just gotta, you just gotta go out on the field and do it. And okay, secondo te, chi, cosa separa giocatori di triplo, di doppio, a giocatori di mezzo? Cioè, a parte l'abilità, ma l'abilità è un momento che c'erano tutti. No? So, what separates like 
double A, triple A, and big league guys. Like, I started dominating because I think it's all mental. I mean, it's 90% mental. That's what I'm, that's yeah. what I say. And I'm, I don't know, I'm convinced that, that that's how it is. Like, that's why those guys separate themselves, right? Or no? Yeah. Non è quello il fatto, cioè, perché gente che comunque mentalmente è talmente forte che, che riesce a, ad avere, diciamo, a non avere yeah. tutti quegli altri bassi, giusto? Absolutely. Shout out to David Luber. He just sent a message. Yeah. What up, Lou? Big um, dog. No, so, Ale, I would say the difference is about being self-aware, right? Just being present and understanding what you can do as a player and how to just go do it every day. It, it seems simple, right? It seems like a very simple concept to just be yourself. It's incredibly hard to be yourself in the big leagues. It's, mm -hmm. it's just the most difficult thing to do. And that, the guys that take ownership of who they are the best and don't worry about performance. They don't worry about going 0 for 4. They don't worry about going 0 for 8. They don't worry about going 0 for 12. Like, those things are hard. Fare 0 su 12 in mezzo è difficile. Non solo perché sei 0 su 12, ma perché c'è un giornale che sta parlando di questo. L'intervista il giorno dopo è che sta, vuol parlare di questo. Sai, eh, sai che in mente il telecronista sta parlando durante la partita che sei 0 su 12. Cioè. E eventualmente 0 su 12 può diventare molto facilmente 0 su 16, perché se sei nel box dire cacchio, devo far valida, devo far valida, invece di dire I'm just gonna play. Uh -huh. e, e ti dico la verità, secondo me questa è la cosa che separa molta gente. Like that is the thing that is the, the, really the big separator, the big key is how do you manage failure and remember who you are so that you can just go out and perform every day within the, your ability like within your ability you don't have to be more than what you are you just have to be the best version of who you are every day right that's what brings i think the best ability to do it hey is that anthony granado with game prep baseball oh baby is that it yeah nice. anthony granado oh <laughs> Like, that's our guy, Paisan, man. <laughs> uh, quindi, Chris, questa, questo livello mentale, molti lo raggiungono anche con mental coaches? O, cioè, adesso la figura del mental coach sta diventando sempre più presente, no? Um, te dici che quasi la maggior, cioè, la maggior parte dei giocatori lo usa? O anche te, magari l'hai mai usato, anche te, ti è capitato? Io, Ale, ti dico la verità. Io li usavo, lo usavo ogni volta che ero in città. Uh, okay. e, e, ero molto vicino con il nostro mental coach sia a, a, a Minnesota che a Toronto ovviamente quando stai giocando bene è molto più facile non averne bisogno perché è quella certo. la differenza no? cioè, quando stai giocando uno deve gestire la mente nella stessa maniera quando non sta giocando bene e sta giocando al suo meglio no? like you have to figure out you have to balance how to how to deal with when you're not playing your best and when you're playing your best and they're the same they have to be the same and that's what people talk about when they say dealing with the ups and downs you know i would say every major league team now has at least one mental coach and i think 2013 when i first got to the big leagues was the start of that where teams were employing someone at either as a consultant or full-time mm -hmm. um it, it really depends on the player whether sure. they use them or not. I, I, I think people are, are irresponsible if they don't use them. They, mm -hmm. they should use them um, because I think everybody needs them. But then again, I don't know how everybody thinks. I know how I think. And the way I think, I feel crazy. Like I feel because my mind is just always, always, always going. And I'm sure you've, we've, you and I have been no, no, certo, out certo. with the, the national team. We talk about this stuff all the time. How do I control this? How do I get it to, to just get me to, to believe in who I am and circumstances around me? So mental coaches can help you with techniques. And that was the thing that I learned. La cosa che ho imparato io meglio di tutto dai, dai mental coach è quanto era importante respirare. Quanto era importante respirare. Perché il respiro ti rimette, ti, ti fa rallentare tutto, ti fa rallentare il cuore. Ed è una delle cose, Ale, che di cui abbiamo parlato di te all'europeo e alla qualificazione, sì. che in attacco me lo, cioè, sentivo il peso, no? sentivo il peso della squadra, era il mio dovere per la squadra. Sì. Non per dire che gli altri non erano capaci di farlo, però 
sapevo che per vincere, per noi, perché Lidia ha deciso di non venire, <ride> e, era molto importante che io giocassi al mio meglio, no? Quindi tutti i turni, anche lì, in momenti che non erano neanche tanto chiave. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, respirare, trovare metodi che... Eh, per rallentare il gioco, dai, ti slow down. Chris, e altra domanda di Demis Bighi, almeno così si chiama su, su Instagram, e poi mi allaccio anche un'altra domanda che avevo io. Lui ti chiede come sei diventato quello che sei oggi e io appunto ti volevo chiedere, allacciandomi, cosa consiglieresti ai giovani in, in linea di massima per arrivare a fare la carriera che hai fatto. So, uh, one of the followers asking Chris how he became the, the, you know, the player that he actually became and I'm um, actually adding to that uh, what do you suggest to all the young players like what should they need in order to you know uh, try to have a career like you did i would say the first thing you have to have is desire right you have to want to do it and you have to want it probably more than you want anything else right mm -hmm. so like you can want to go to a party and you want to go hang out with your friends and you can want to you know eat cheesecake and whatever you have to want what you want to go get more than you want anything else in life, right? Questa è la prima cosa. Volerlo più che vuoi qual qualsiasi altra cosa nella tua vita. Number two, you have, to go, you have to go take it. You just have to go take it. It's there. You have to go take it. Now, when I say that, it, it's not just, hey, like, let me grab this napkin over here. Like, I'm just going to take it out of the air. Because there's a lot of circumstances that go into what being what you want to be right mm -hmm. there's a lot of variables there's a lot of other people and a lot of people that are better than you so what you have to learn how to do really well is make adjustments you have to make adjustments quindi la seconda cosa ti devi aggiustare no mm -hmm. perché a quello che è attorno perché c'è molta gente brava c'è molta gente capace making adjustments is what allows you to get better right so you have to adapt to the world that's around you because the world doesn't need to adapt to you. If somebody's already really good and they're ahead of you, you're the one that has to change to catch them, right? And, and I'd say the third thing, and this is what I was talking about before, is self-awareness, right? Like, be honest with yourself because if you're not self-aware, then you can't, you can't be honest of whether you're working hard enough and you can't be honest about whether you're making enough adjustments to do what you need to do. You know, it's like the guy that goes 0 for 4 with three strikeouts and he makes an excuse that it was the umpire's fault and the lights did it. And, yeah. you know, well, I mean, you were in the box, so, like, probably you had a little bit to do with it. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, those are, those are the, the three things that I think I try to live by every day, whether it's baseball mm -hmm. or anything else. E la terza cosa di che in italiano che stavo dicendo l'abilità di, di dire di essere di ragionarla da solo di, di, di riconoscere le cose da solo non so se c'è una parola come self awareness in italiano però sì, sì, è riconoscimento personale diciamo sì. Sì, 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 sì. ok sì sì uh, question, uh, domanda di Ale Pivi best player you played with and best you played against uh, miglior... non puoi fare il mio nome eh? allora eh, scherzo sì, sì, la, prima, <ride> la prima persona che ho pensato è di te il miglior giocatore con cui hai giocato contro e con cui hai giocato in squadra. Best player. Well, the best chef I ever had is Nigelicious, who just sent us a message. Nigel, I remember when Barry made a sandwich Bro, after I you. I miss you more than, <laughs> more than I miss your food, but I also miss your food in a way you can't understand. You want to talk about good pizza? That guy. Oof. Okay, so one of the guys was actually asking uh, earlier uh, what was the best rest restaurant for you in Toronto? Is oh, that it? I So I'm very, like, there's three restaurants that I ate at all the time. One is Barbarian's Steakhouse. Uh -huh. The other one is the Keg. It's, it actually exists everywhere, kind of. Okay. Um, it's like a chain. And the other one is J uh, Jacob's Steakhouse. So those three places were where we're gotcha. um, Okay, let's go. Let's go back to the players. Oh, so best the, player. Yeah, you played with. Best player I ever played with. Okay, best yeah. player I ever played with. It's a tough question. Um, Pilar, you still here? You, you should probably... It, yeah, KP. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I think if you look at the overall career, Tom Abbott, um, 
if you look at their overall career, I would say, I would say it has to be too low, probably. Okay. Right, like wire to wire, um, or Maurer, right? Like two guys, right. that, and especially for their position, like catcher yeah. and shortstop, like borderline Hall of Famers, right? Both of them. Or maybe they both will be. I think Tula would have been a Hall of Famer if he didn't get hurt for sure. Uh, Joe is like right on the cusp. If he could have caught his whole career, he would be a Hall of Famer. Um, and best player I played against, I think the one I was most excited to play against uh, was one Miguel Cabrera. Nice. He, yeah, first hit against Detroit too, so I got to do that from him. So you, yeah, you got to go there first and have a chat. Yeah, it, well, Fielder was playing first that day. Okay. And I was like, I remember getting a first. And I was like, oh, that's Prince Fielder. And then I just, and I just, the funny thing was that I doubled him off in that game after. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a picture today of you at first with uh, Big Papi. Turn on a photo to um, yeah, yeah, yeah. From that, Big Papi. David what was the talk about, man? What did you, yeah. what you guys I talk about? I have to include him in best players I ever played against. So that day, right, Ortiz comes up to bat. And we were playing really well as a team. And every time Poppy and I would – we would see each other, we would talk about Minnesota because he started Minnesota, I started Minnesota. And then it seemed like when we both got out of Minnesota, we went – like our careers got better, you know. So we had our, our, our fun with it. And he would always call me, Italiano! And I'd say, Dime papa! <laughs> So we would always chat when we'd see each other. And he's like that with everyone. He's great, right? He's yeah, yeah. Hug and he was nice. He was nice to my family. I introduced him to my mom because she was so excited. So that day we're playing Boston and we're up by like seven runs, right? It's like eight to one or something. And Brock Holt gets on first base. And, you know, I'm looking in the dugout. It's like the seventh or eighth inning. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to play behind the runner. You gioco dietro, non no, no, no gioco sulla base, sì. no? E, e il manager, John Gibbons, mi fa, oh, like, gioca davanti. And I was like, I was like, you know, David Ortiz is up at bat. You want, you want me to play in front of the runner? Uh -huh. David Ortiz up to bat? <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 I'm gonna go behind. And they're like, no, no, in front. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so now I go in his back pocket and and Mark Burley comes out to the to the where Gibbons is. And Burley's like, come in, man, come on, come in. <laughs> and I'm like, and so the first pitch, we have a guy Ryan to Paris pitching with cutters. And I'm like, he's gonna hit it down my throat. He's gonna hit it in my mouth. First pitch. Whack! Laser foul, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna die!" I thought I was gonna die. I literally looked <laughs> into the dugout to Burley, and I was like, "I was like, and Burley was laughing." So David, when he got to first, I go, I go, I go, "Oh yeah!" I go, like, I don't know if you know how lo de español. I don't know if you know how hard it is to play first base when you're off the bat, like when I'm playing back there normally, you know? Uh -huh. But these, and I used some choice words, like not kind words. I was like, these mother, you know, they wanted me to play in front. And I was like, no. <laughs> he start, that was him when he started laughing like that. Very um, nice, man. Um, I'm going to keep going with more questions. I got a bunch. Because I'm going to say, I'm going to say, su Instagram, ma dopo non riesco a leggerle. Una, una è qua di Valerio Simone. Oh, siamo troppo famosi, Alessandro. Sei troppo famoso. E, quindi, favorite moment, memory of your career, AU Baseball Gears asking is probably Bautista. Yeah, the, yeah. The home right. run. And, so I think we, we got that. Personal moment when I hit the home run my mom's birthday, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, I remember that. That's a good one. Um, allora... Torniamo, ok, cosa ti ha spinto, chiede Michele Floris, cosa ti ha spinto a venire a San Marino due anni fa? E, sì, quindi direi, oh, inizio avevo anche da chiederti l'ultima parentesi che hai avuto tra quella del baseball italiano, <coughs> le uniamo un po' insieme, dai, cosa ti ha spinto a venire? Uh, la cosa che mi ha spinto a vi dico la verità, erano due, erano Alessandro Maestri e Mario Chiarini. Questo è sì, Grandi. E questa è la verità, non... <ride> eh, guarda... <ride> Io nato, cioè non nato, però nato sui campi del Rimini Baseball, quindi 
mi immaginavo sempre se veniva a giocare in Italia sarei venuto a giocare a Rimini comunque a quel punto le cose erano cambiate fondamentalmente sì. eh, i miei due fratelli del baseball italiano tra gli altri che adesso esistono Valerio ti sto pensando ma anche Reginato era lì mio piccolo fratello Vaglio un po' meno mio fratello dai eh, Vaglio personalità che dai ne... scherzo eh. Eh, no, odio amore non fare il permaloso ok Vaglio eh, no, comunque è stato cioè, veramente quello e ovviamente circostanze qua in America a quel punto eh, era l'anno che sembrava che si faceva molto fatica a, a firmare qua anche per i giocatori che avevano molto tempo in mezzo quindi ho detto dai gli ho già detto al manager che faccio, faccio il super sick perché non vengo a fare un po' di stagione in Italia erano 15 anni ormai che non ero venuto e, sì. E per quello ho fatto la decisione di venire là. Ecco. Esatto, esatto. Eh, niente, in campionato italiano ne parliamo spesto, sì, we, we talk about that a lot. Dal punto di vista delle esperienze, guarda, quello che e tutti i ragazzi che sono qui lo sanno, ne abbiamo parlato molto, c'è, mol, c'è molto spazio per crescere, ovviamente. E questa è la maniera che la dico, nel senso che mh, si potrebbe dire che ah, ci sono po- molti problemi, le cose stanno peggiorando, però alla fine... È... Tutte le cose sono in mano ai giocatori a questo punto e penso che con tutte le cose che abbiamo, discu- che, che abbiamo discusso tra di noi negli ultimi, negli ultimi, le ultime 3, 4, 5 settimane possono aiutarci molto e, e c'è bisogno di farlo, c'è il bisogno. Sì. Se la gente vuole che il baseball in Italia continui, c'è bisogno di farlo. L'associazione dei giocatori sta facendo un gran lavoro per, per mettersi in posizione per aiutare tutti tutti noi, non solo voi, tutti noi, perché ne faccio parte anch'io, e, ed è una cosa che deve succedere assolutamente, e c'è molta gente interessata in aiutare, per quello che il più collegati si è, il, il meglio andrà in avanti, no? Penso, certo, certo. Me, no, da come la vedo io, finché tutti noi rimaniamo dal punto di vista che viviamo da soli nel mondo del baseball e che dobbiamo ragionarla da solo, faremo sempre fatica. No, no, sì, questa è una conversazione che ultimamente stiamo avendo tanto tra noi giocatori di italiani e dai, si è ormai capito che è l'unico modo per fare qualcosa appunto tramite l'associazione e quindi niente, adesso lì magari ci saranno anche momenti per parlarne insieme magari a Massimiliano dell'associazione con qualche live con lui, comunque sì, sicuramente cioè, si può vedere in negativo che va tutto male, si può vedere in positivo che okay, possiamo iniziare a fare qualcosa per finalmente a cambiarlo, quindi mm-hmm. tutto lì. E the last question I have for now, l'ultima domanda che ho, sure. arriva, eh, questa, questa arriva da, dall'interno della famiglia, questa, volevano ascoltare questa mia moglie, che voleva ascoltare la storia di quando mio babbo ti ha salvato la vita. Oh, oh, my wife wanted, no, wanted to hear the story that when, when my okay. dad actually saved your life. All right, so I'll go English first and then Italian. So <laughs> this is, uh, Ale became my brother way before anybody else that I played with in Italy. I mean, Mario Chiarini was probably the only person I was, I was close with, just as close, like, throughout the years. But Alessandro's dad, first of all, was my dad's team doctor when he played in Italy. He did all the physicals for the boys. And so I knew him, and then he was the team. He did the physicals for my dad's basketball team when my dad did the general assistant GM in Italy for basketball. So I knew your dad from probably before I knew you. I met, I think we met when I was like 10 and you were nine yeah. or something like that, or eight. You're, you're two years younger than me, right? You're no. 85, see? I don't think yeah. so. Um, so I knew your dad. I, I just knew who he was. We go to this tournament in Runke. I'm 14. I had just gotten done my freshman year in high school and I wasn't playing in the summer because I broke my thumb uh, at home. I tagged a guy. So my mom said, Why don't we go to Italy? Dad said, Why don't we go to Italy? I go, Great. So in, in like early July, when we're over there, my thumb heals. And I used to always bring my bat and glove to Italy. So I go to the field because I want to just hang out. And Rimini's like, wow, why don't you come play with the Cadetti? And I was like, well, all right, cool. Because what, what else am I going to do? Just go to the beach every day. So I go play this tournament, the first tournament. I have a great time. Love it. Go play another tournament. Great time. Love it. And there's one more tournament left at the end of August. And I'm supposed to leave to go home to come back to school. And my dad, I tell my dad, I was like, man, I would really love to do this tournament. Like, so my parents actually end up changing my flight 
So I get to go to one more tournament in Butrio. Okay. It was Butrio. Butrio. And uh, so I go up there and, you know, we're at the tournament and everybody was staying in. It was like a, it looked like a castle, like church type thing. It was like this old building, right? It had like mm -hmm. rocks outside, it was weird. And then we would walk down to the field and our coaches would drive their car with the bags. We get knocked out of the semifinals on like the the, the quarterfinal game, right? And I'm I was like pissed. I was like really really bad. I'm like, <laughs> like I was being a baby about it, right? So the next day, the coach tells me he's like, "Hey, we're gonna play all the other guys, like, because we can't make the finals." So I was being an idiot. Like I was like throwing rocks and stuff. Like even when we were getting ready to go to the field, I was just being stupid. So at one point, like. Not to say that I was trying to sit on a car and, like, that took off, but I, I sat on the back of our coach's car. He had all the bags in the car, so he couldn't see out the back. So I'm sitting on the trunk, and I'm, like, kind of, like, rocking back and forth like this, like, just very much like this. And at one point, like, I'm, like, kind of, like, laying on it. He takes off. He doesn't see me on the back of his car, and he starts driving, and I, I, I like, panicked right away. And then I was like, oh, crap, like, he's moving. And there was, like, that little hill. So now I'm, like, riding on the car, and I, I don't know what to do, so I – I jump off and thinking, oh, yeah, I'll land on my feet. But it's a decline, and we're going about 15, 20 miles an hour. My feet hit, and I went <clears throat> right into the ground. So uh, the scars on my face, anybody that sees them. Uh, this is all unbeknownst to me. Like, I didn't recognize it, obviously, because I was passed out. Um, but I woke up, and the first person that I saw when I woke up was your dad. And I kept thinking to myself, like, what was your dad doing there? And I came to find out later that had your dad not been there, because he was obviously a, a, a doctor, a physician, okay. he was able to recognize that I was swallowing so much blood that he had to tip my head over and, and get the blood to come out, or else I, I probably would have drowned in my own blood. So very grateful to you and your family in so many ways. And it's posso spiegare anche in italiano, però mi immagino che molta gente la capisca. Ha capito. E tra l'altro, adesso mi dà un countdown di 40 secondi, non so se finisce la chiamata, tra l'altro, perché dopo è passato un'ora forse. Quindi in caso, in caso finisca, poi magari ci, riconne, ci ricolleghiamo. Sì. Per magari quelle che saranno poi le ultime domande della gente collegata, se c'è qualcuno che vuole fare delle domande, if anybody wants to... Uh, actually, yeah, I don't know. It's saying 20 seconds now. I don't know. Is it going to be over? It's almost like a countdown. I don't do, know. Do you want to reconnect? I have a little bit more time if you need. No, me. actually, I think we're good. 14 seconds. What do you think? If anybody has questions, I'm going to send them to you, man. Yeah, perfect. Hey, no, thank no. you so much, buddy. Hey, Grazie brother, mille. Dog. Si, si. Andiamo a mangiare. Everybody dominate, dog. I love you, man. Everybody dominate. Bye.